what is your recommendation? How did you finally, you know, find that ability to get unstuck and and take those leaps of faith, the steps towards you went back to school, you did all these things, but that was scary. That was, you know, I'm sure your ego said, don't walk away from a very cush job and all these things. So what and all my you friends. <laughs> yeah. And that too, you, you yeah, as you go through these changes, a lot of people will probably judge you, will probably tell you you're crazy. Your own family may talk you out of it, right? And that's yeah. that's incredibly difficult. I I do feel for people that feel so stuck and have all these things seemingly working against them, but I would say they're still the universe is still working for them. Yeah. Um I think it's important that we hold a vision for where we want to end up. Mm. And if I'm trying to travel from Los Angeles to Boston, for example, it's helpful to know I'm going to Boston, right? Even though the truth is there are 100,000 different ways that I could get myself from Los Angeles to Boston. What we do and what the ego does, because the ego is governed by safety, security, comfort, and control, right? Fear is the territory of the ego because the ego likes familiarity. Even if that familiarity is uncomfortable, even if we're dying, right? Spiritually, emotionally, um, the ego is going to hold on to that familiarity because it feels safe. Right. And then it just has to deal with the fear. And in order for us to move forward, it will require us to get out of our comfort zone. So, in the territory of the ego, the ego always wants to have a really big, elaborate plan. Well, how are we going to get to Boston? And how long is it going to take? And what's going to be the return on the investment? And is there an exit strategy? And the ego wants all the answers answered before it's willing to leave Los Angeles. So here's my theory. Every time we take one little step, the entire landscape changes. Do you play chess? I have. It's been a while. So I'm learning how to play chess. And I have this like grand revelation on the chessboard with my husband that Every time you move one man on the chessboard, it literally changes the entire landscape of everything that's happening, right? Right. Well, life is just like this because there is no future and there is no past. There really is only right now as we know. So when I make a plan that I'm going to get from Los Angeles to Boston, this is the way I'm going to go. And I, hold fixated to that plan, I end up pushing and forcing myself against life because every step I take, the landscape changes around me. So if I am willing to take one step at a time and then check in, reassess, see what is, see what life is showing me, see where life is inviting me, then I am in flow Mm. with going to Boston, even though I've like made this grand agreement with the, with the universe, universe, I want to get to Boston or someplace even better. And I'm open, Mm. I'm willing, but if I hold rigidly to how I'm going to get to Boston and the fact that I have to end up in Boston, I will hurt myself along the way. So what happened with me, Casper, when I stepped down from my role, I did what I could with what I had from where I was, right? It made sense in my life to hang up a shingle as a marketing consultant because I had a lot of contacts. I had 20 years of experience in a particular industry. As I was willing to remain open, the universe was the universe guided me into coaching. The universe nudged me into spiritual psychology, right? 
But if I had said, no, I'm not going because it doesn't make any sense, then you and I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And I would have robbed myself of deep joy, deep fulfillment, massive elation, and delight in my life. And I believe really that is why we all come here, you know, to experience it. Oh, yeah. No, that that really resonates. And I, I had J.K. Dickinson, an author on recently, and we were talking about that expectations and how expectations really are a negative force in many ways because 100%. as soon as we don't get what we expect and usually we don't we become very you know um uh, disheartened and, and uh, disenchanted and, and angry and we start to fall into what david hawkins says at a negative consciousness levels yes. and the truth is and it was it was it was an interesting conversation because it was like well don't you need goals and don't you need vision? And they're not the same thing as expectations. And you said that so beautifully. You can still up, end up in Boston and not have to take that plane that you said has to get you there on time, right? And then you miss that plane and suddenly your expectation, oh my goodness, this isn't for me. And no, and, and you stop maybe and then you don't go or you stop trying altogether and become miserable that you missed the one plane to get there when no, it, it wasn't the plane for you. You were meant to drive a little bit, see beautiful things on the way, meet beautiful people on your way. And so th that's why I think another principle, and we brought this up very quickly, and I'll point to the book back there, but letting go, this idea, David Hawkins' book, letting go, um, is is really, really important. But it's it's, again, it's really difficult to let go. It's really difficult to your belief systems, expectations, are grounded in so much of what we what we think about throughout the day. We expect things to go a certain way, and we really attach ourselves to that 